You just want to talk basketball, don't you? And I'm not going to hold the players accountable. Now, back to Steiny and Guru <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. All right, we're joined by Mark Willard and F.P. Santangelo. And, you know, let me tell you something about dibs. There's a difference between dibs and goo. Oh, yeah, I know, I know I'm going there right away. Like, dibs knows not to get too high when he's going to Vegas. You know what? I, you, you can set up expectations that you'll never meet in Vegas. You got to go in there and just be like, yeah, I'm just going. We'll see what happens. Pace you yourself. Know, it, pace not yourself. only pace yourself, but you don't say, oh, hey, yeah, action left <laughs> and action right. And this is just go there like it's any other city. And I think you have a better opportunity. When you go there and you set too high of a bar, you can never meet it. I just, the reason he brought that up, I asked, you think Dibs is drunk in Vegas right now? And, Willard, you said? And I said, absolutely. Because he's in the middle of that initial push into Vegas. There's no bigger dichotomy in America than the flight to Vegas oh, versus the flight home from Vegas. Man. You're not even allowed to speak on the flight home in Vegas. A library is Shades loud. on and everything. Absolutely. If you talk to the person next to you, you can get arrested for doing that on the flight home. To Vegas, but the flight to Vegas, <laughs> oh. you can sit down in someone's lap without even asking. Man, and everybody's a friend on the way to Vegas. I had one trip to Vegas. Now, fair uh, or unfair, this was a uh, it was a bachelor party situation where my friends had put me in a completely vulnerable position upon arrival. <laughs> but I had a, a a flight attendant walk over to me. My butt hit the seat. I didn't even oh, say okay. anything so to it's anyone. Go time. I didn't even say anything to anyone yet. And she walks over and goes, you're cut off. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm like, I'm just here. I'm, what did I do? <laughs> Obviously, I was doing things that I wasn't aware of. I was, uh, it was an inebriation sensation. FP, but, uh, you're cut off. You're cut off. I hadn't even done, I hadn't, I hadn't looked at anyone. I hadn't said anything. <laughs> She's just like, we're not serving you. <laughs> wow. I was like, I didn't order anything. And quit Get profiling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Styling yeah, yeah. and profiling. Yeah, yeah. How, many, how many times should we cut off at a bar? See, Vegas isn't for amateurs, bro. Like, you got to be a wow. pro. Again. You got to be a pro to <laughs> Again, go. again, this story, which some of them are probably driving around listening right now. Hey, Craig. Hey, Mike. Whatever. Like, <laughs> I got basically kidnapped out of my own house. Like, they wouldn't let me bring a bag. Like the dentist on The Hangover? That movie? is, I, I was not, a, I did like I the, can't say his name. The, the, the no, that, that movie I the saw. The story is, is they rang the doorbell. I opened the door. They grabbed me. They physically <laughs> grabbed me and threw me into the back of a van. And I went, you guys, you don't leave. My wallet's still inside. I go, if you want me to wear the same outfit all weekend, fine. I'll play along. But you don't want to have to pay for me, do you? And they're like, yeah, that's a good point. Wow. So we had to break, they, but they closed the door behind them when we left. We had to break in, break back into my own house so that I could get my wallet and then put me back in the car and start drinking out of water bottles. See, like, you go to Vegas. That happened. And you gotta Tell go, us. It, it's the no plan plan. Like Steiny's saying, it's a no plan plan. You're just going to Vegas. And, and don't get too high. Don't get too low. Just you're, just go, go to Vegas because Vegas is going to happen. So, and if you, if you haven't got out in a while and you go to Vegas, yeah. you're going to peak too soon. You're going to yes. be passed out in your room at 4 o'clock. No doubt. In, in the afternoon. Not in the morning, in the afternoon. Yeah, but I'm here for that. Because it, you know, it's like a bunco party for people that don't drink. And all of a sudden, everybody's <laughs> hammered the two seconds into the bunco party and they're passed out on the table because they're not used to drinking. I love that you picked bunco for that. Well, I don't know. But it's anyway, a game to go mind, ahead. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Vegas is, is for pros, number one. Wow. And if you are an amateur, that's fine. But recognize that you're an amateur mm -hmm. and just go to Vegas. And stay in your lane. Vegas is going to happen. No, you can get out of your lane, but just know that Vegas is going to happen. But if you're going, if you're going to try, like, in a sporting event, you try to make things happen, you're not going to have a good game. Let the, let Vegas, uh, exactly. come, let Vegas come to you. Let I, Vegas come to you. Don't press. I do think that you just coined what should be their next marketing slogan. What's that? Forget this whole what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> I love that one, though. I like what you just yeah. said. Vegas is going to happen. Vegas is going to happen. That was Vegas deep. is going to happen. Let it come to you. Yeah, Let the a, game come to you. That's a t-shirt. And, yeah. then, and then play like a champion. FP will get to the Warriors, <laughs> but last time I seen you, and we were talking about the Giants, because we did, it was just like, man. And since then, I'm asking you, how do you feel now? I know the Rennell thing, that's separate, and it was a tragedy, and it was BS, 
But the product on the field, you got to tip your cap, right? Absolutely. And Yamamoto's got a 45 ERA oh my, after, one, really, after, that's after, after one. This was the best Somebody wake up no I had. Oh, under. my God. Yeah, to 15 to I 11. I woke up at 6 Dude. in the morning, and I couldn't even see yet. And I'm like, he gave up how many runs <laughs> in one cool. inning? He's going to be is fine. so great. He's going to be fine, no, probably. He's not. He's but they stay. got some action in the lineup Dude, and I, I, snail. I'm just saying, I, I said this, and Web. I would have thought it maybe not been as strong on the opinion had he been a giant, but I always look at you signing somebody that's never played in the big leagues as a whoa. Oh, and even with Jung Hoo, even with Jung, even with Jung Hoo, but he's a this guy's a pitcher though. Uh, like he, it's different. It's different. He hasn't faced the the, the greatest players on the planet ever. Consistently right. every go, fifth but day. But we always go to where where has it come from before? There have been a lot of pitchers who've come over from Japan and done very very well, and some haven't. That's true. What's the so, difference between coming from Japan as a pro and coming up through the minor league systems in in America? It, it depends. That's a good question, Stein. It depends on what era you're talking about. Like back in the day, the minor leagues, the competition was fierce. Like in Double A, the games and the, and the organizations, and there was prospects everywhere, and you had to learn the game on every single different level to get to the next level. So meaning. You didn't move fast through systems. You had to show that you were um, adept on defense, adept on base running. Mm. You had to show that you were better offensively than the level you're playing, and then you would get to the next level. How long were you in the minors? Seven years. And wow. then and then you would get to AAA, and you're looking around, and there's Sean Green, and there's Carlos Delgado, and there's Derek Jeter, and those guys are in AAA for like a year or two because you wow. had to show that you were better than that level and to that get to the big faster. leagues. Yeah. And when you got to the big leagues, and I know I'm sounding old right now, in the 90s or the 80s, you were a complete baseball player. Right. You didn't learn at the highest level. There was no real fast track unless you were a John Olerud or you know the the, the once in a lifetime guys. But you had to show that you were all facets of the game you had covered. Now guys are getting rushed because uh, there's such a, a need at the highest level that guys are learning to play at the major league level that necessarily. At, t at times aren't ready to play. So O'Neill Cruz, just the fast track for the Pirates. Luis Matos is okay. learning to play at the highest level. That's hard, man. Wow. So all the little things, reading a ball in the dirt, you know, uh, we're down by one right here and your run's a tie and run, or we're up by five and you could take a chance on the bases, or, you know, when to push the envelope, when to play conservative, when to how to play winning baseball. And I think good organizations taught their minor leaguers how to be complete players and how to learn how to win at the minor league level so you can contribute at the big league level. Or say you have a third-place hitter in AAA, but he's bunting because he might be a seventh-place hitter in the big leagues. Damn, man. And then you get to the big leagues, you're a complete player. Now you're seeing guys that just, hey, man, we got to win. This guy's hurt. Boom, you're 21, you're 22, and you're learning at the highest level. And maybe you don't know how to run the bases yet or don't know when to take a shorter secondary because you can't get doubled up on a line drive because your run means so much in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Or we're up by three here. We're going to take a chance on the ball in the dirt because we want to get you in scoring position for that fourth run to take the grand slam away. Like so there, There's ways that you learn how to play the game at the minor league level through trial and error. You make a mistake in front of 200 people in Bakersfield, Nothing. it's not the same as making a mistake <laughs> in front of 40,000 people at Dodger Stadium or 50,000 people on national TV. So what we're seeing now is not so much a watered-down product. The talent is still there with the young players. The talent's amazing. But they're learning how to play in front of our eyes. And you're like, why did he throw to that base? Mm. Why did he miss a cutoff, man? It's obvious you got to keep the double play in order right here because that's a tying run on first. Try to throw out the guy at third, not second, third. Like, what do you do? These are the things that we all did in A ball or double A. So when Derek Jeter got to the big leagues, he already knew all these things. And you're like, oh, that guy's good. And when the other guys that I, Chipper Jones, I played against Chipper Jones in the minors. When he got to the big leagues, a complete player Whoop. from day one. And now we're seeing guys that are learning right in front of our eyes. And it's a different game. Mm. Willard, we threw the uh, fans a curveball with the Otani news. And yeah. why I love what we do is everybody has their own opinion. Right or wrong, it's how you feel. What do you two make of that? Because I don't know. And Shasky was on his way out before we started our show. And I got a paraphrase. He wasn't. He didn't say Otani is guilty. But he's like, hmm, if you heard his show. Mm. I don't know what to make of it well, and where it's going. So uh, FP and I feel like we are uh, uh, faux experts on the topic because we were forced to sort of like unpack this live on the air. Okay. CS, like, is, oh, CSI 95.7. Click and go. <laughs> True go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go with CSU, not CSI, because I felt like I didn't understand what the hell was going on. <laughs> but we were trying to unpack the whole thing, and Dallas Braden came on, and I thought, 
really did a good job of sort like of Dallas. like humanizing who this person was, Otani's uh, interpreter. Um, I've read more about it. A little bit more has come out. And here are two things that I will say. I have no idea if Otani is knee deep in and this. And he's Otani's friend. Too. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, closest okay. to friends. Gotcha. So I don't, what I mean is, I don't know if Otani's a gambler or not. And, and quite frankly, I don't, I don't even really care. Here are the two things that stand out to me. Number one, the Otani camp and his lawyers have already changed their story twice. Yeah. Okay. Let me okay. We're like a day in and they've already changed their story. Here's the second thing. There ain't no way in hell that in 2024 you can wire four and a half million dollars from an account without the account holder knowing. Think about what happens when somebody steals your card and tries to buy gas. Texts, emails, zzz, zzz, think your whole world blows up. Your card has been compromised. How about even when you just go Christmas shopping when no one stole your card? We've all gotten that text yeah. message. Is this you? Did, right? It's your best friend. Did you too. Thank you. Did you just spend $300 at Urban Outfitters on your daughter? Because that doesn't feel like you. Yeah, that was me, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> There's no way in hell that Shohei Otani did not know that $4.5 million had just been wired from his account. Yeah. And the first part of the story was my buddy's a degenerate. I had his back. I paid it. And they're right. like, oh, you can't say that. But I guess you're telling the those are facts. But if he didn't place a bet on baseball, then there's nothing to see here, right? Even if he helped his homie out or tried to pay a gambling debt. Like, where does that? Well, I've, that would be sort of our best guess. I think, FP, I don't want to speak for you, but it, as far as what probably happened, which is he did go. That's a lot of money. Yeah, let me take care of you. You're my guy. And then baseball was like, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't have a wire from your account to an illegal bookmaker. So they came in and went, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, sorry, your friend's fired. And we're going to turn him into a thief. Wow. You're not going to say a word. And you take the chance. Because it looks shady. You take the chance if you're baseball that this isn't going to now get worse and you're going to find out that somebody bet on baseball. Yeah, I, I, I think the 2020s are going to go down as the gambling era. And uh, there's going to be a congressional investigation led by Mitch McConnell. It's going to be called the McConnell Report. We're going to find it. out that everybody in baseball has been gambling. Okay, wow. now I have to ask you a question because I already saw your son tweet uh, yeah. that earlier today. Did yeah, I, I added the, I added the McConnell well, okay, Report. Okay, was it what, who the the gambling era? Did that come from you or did it come from him? I I, I, I know I, you guys I, talk to each other a lot. Who said it first? That's him. It was him. Yeah, he's smarter than his dad. Well, but he's way truth. smarter than his dad. Stani was talking. I do mean, you, gambling. Do you, do you even know that he was my first producer when I yeah, came back home? Yeah, he loves you, dude. I love him he too. Do, he does. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was just a, he was bright eyed and bushy tailed out of college and maybe rubbed some people the wrong way, but he's all yeah, grown up he's, now. Yeah, he's, he's all grown no, up he's now. He's, he's, he's married. His wife is amazing. He's a good dude. He's a grown up. You're man. listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. What else are we talking? We, we're talking about a lot of stuff today. Kaminga, talking, talking about, a lot Kaminga. about Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah, I'll say this about Jonathan Kaminga. He's good. Um, he's he's Hello? good. He's good. Is it, is it time for the next show? <laughs> if Jonathan Kaminga can spend another off season, as you would say, go in the lab. Oh my goodness! And if this guy can develop a scary three point shot, then I will firmly believe that yes. The Warriors have a superstar, not a star, a yeah. superstar in the making. Does he He does it, Does he need a three-point shot? Because yeah. I think he can be a superstar either way, in, dude. In, I'll push in, back a little in bit. In today's right NBA, I say yes. Okay. Because he's 32% from there now. That ain't... Well, yeah. and they're letting him shoot. Okay. They, Daring that, him. That's yeah. 32% yeah. while they're just staring at him, yeah. going like, dude, shoot it. Yeah. I want to know, can you shoot with a hand in your face? Can you actually have an outside shot? Forget even if it's a three-pointer. Just we know you can get to the basket just, on us. Right. It's over. Something other than getting to the basket. Oh, man. Can you knock down an outside shot at a, at a high clip? Because if you can, well, now you're unstoppable. Now the, you are an unstoppable Kevin Durant-level offensive force. And what about the rebounding? Um, does, it, does he need to add that to his game to be a superstar? Pods, or we just should never be a better rebounder than you. Yeah, uh, Pods ain't gonna make it to twenty five taking all these charges, dude. Man, he's gonna be in a wheelchair. The family jewels. See the yeah, one, maybe. the one thing like Kaminga's definitely an intriguing player. There's, there's no doubt about it. But the one thing that's clearly an issue with him is 
if you if you I always do close your eyes and think about how he scored last night or some of his. I mean, he gets a lot of points when he's a little bit ahead of the field. He still's got somebody to beat. He still got somebody to beat, and they're in transition defense. But he's got maybe a number or two. He's got to rebound. He's got to be. He's got to rebound and still be able to do that. And I know it's hard, but. Like it's it's he's still at the one or the other. He leaks out, yeah. and that's why he doesn't rebound well defensively. But you can't give up on the idea that maybe he can start to rebound better and still get out. And like that's well, what that's what that's what like James Worthy yep. did. And, and you know what I mean? Man. Like his defense has also suffered a little bit because more is being asked of him at the offensive end. So uh, yeah, there there is that. You know, that motor that Steph and Clay have had for years where they're just running constantly. Oh, man. And they're, like, in better shape than the rest of the NBA, which is a crazy thing to say. Like, that was a big part of what made them so great through the years. Yeah, you wonder about that with Kaminga. Like, can you can you be the guy that also outworks everybody? You have such amazing raw skill that's unstoppable. If you can, if, if, if he could be that, like you're saying, if he can add you know, really effective rebounder, or if even, gosh, forget three-pointer. If you could be like, I love you from from 15 feet. Man. Because the defense has got to sag off him. They've got, they can't downhill, come up on him. They'll go right by you and dunk it. He's I, got got that. I got a question for you guys. Well, why isn't speed talked about in the NBA? Like, in football, you have the 40. In baseball, you have the 60. And speed is a commodity. And when you look at Jordan Poole a couple of years ago, fastest guy in the court. And you look at Kaminga right now, and I think he's the fastest guy in the Warriors. Like I watched him break Ron, away a couple times. LeBron used to be that. Yeah, and Westbrook. And nobody prom. talks about speed in the NBA. Maybe because you talk about shooting and jumping, and there's so many other skills that are important. But like I think that's one of his assets. Yeah, I like, think he's, he's the fastest guy in the court. I, I think that's his biggest asset. Yeah, there's right. no, no doubt no, about no, no. it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm kind of blo- like now. I've been watching him for two or three years, and I sometimes say to myself. Okay, here comes Kamenga. He's dribbling the ball at full speed, and now he's gotten to half court. And there's guys that are kind of even with him, but even if they're ahead of him, he still goes by him. And Man. I'm like, he's fast, guys, on defense. You know, you got to. Yeah. So, like, that's just one thing that he's. That's a good point. He, he just can't. He can't be kept up with if he's got the angle on you. He just can't. So, will there ever be an adjustment to him? Like, do you do you attack him on his first dribble up the court so he doesn't you make him change direction early because once he gets that one it's over. first then then he's a problem. I, I would think it, it, Mark wants him to work on his three pointers, his ball handling skills. That would be my that's thing. the next just, phase. Just like I want right. to see you dribble like Steph Curry. If yeah. you can dribble like Steph Curry and you have that speed and you have this athleticism, dude. He's he's you can go he's to the amazing. lab and work on that. No, he's do, he's Dominique it. part what, two. For what, me. what we're talking about basically is breaking down a defender. Right. Like Jonathan Kaminga in the open court, that's yeah. a dunk. When you're not going 100 a, miles right. an hour, that's then what do we but, what do we got? But can you call him alone? Yeah, we, like I'm gonna turn and face you. That's beautiful. And you're you're right in my face. And and I am either right. I'm gonna dribble and create and go by you, or if you sag off me. I will put this 15-footer in the center of the cup, and there's not a damn thing that you can do to stop me. Can he do that? And he might be able to. Yeah. He might be able to. And it's he's, exciting. He's, he's only 21. And what what's my saying? Uh, I react to new information. Is there any scenario, and I'm asking all three of you, now, w- whatever happens this year, if it doesn't culminate in the playoff berth, the season, is there a scenario to where you would move Jonathan Kaminga for play? I'm almost – I chose to – like – before I was like, I'll listen. Now I'm almost like, no. it's a, for LeBron and I what's guess. left. And I love you, Bron, but man, Here, here's no how, way. Here's how if I'm Mike Dunleavy in the Warriors brass where I could get, where you could be pulling on both my arms at the same time. Because I want to be with you guys and say no with the caveat of what, what if Steph Curry comes to you and says, do it. And now, uh, man. See, I, because the question, the question reality. is, 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 is what we're at, what we're hoping Jonathan to become as a finished product. I'm fast enough. Does it happen I, ha- fast yeah. enough? It's happened right now. The last two months, exactly. I've never seen a guy improve this much. Okay, fair, but, but it's not yeah. at a, it's not at a level yet where you're like, you're our two. Let's go be a winning team. Yeah, and that's why does to it me, happen, does it happen it, fast it's, enough? It's becoming clear. The goal is to get another guy who's. Mm-hmm. Maybe between Steph and Kaminga, <laughs> in, ter- in terms like a, a pipe dream, 
But like, if you could get LeBron without giving up Kaminga, well, now you got something because okay. now you've got a guy who's great off the ball in Curry or can have the ball. Then you got LeBron who can do either, and then you got both those guys looking for. But can is that within the realm of possibility? Because I'm getting past the point of, well, let's move Kaminga for a 30 year old who could Ugh. do what? Yeah. Well, and that like just, you, that it better feels, be that feels like it could really drive too. you nuts down he's the un, road. He's untouchable. There's no way. Elliot Nass. But the, you know, there's the the other thing is there's so many <laughs> levels to this. He's going to get paid this off season yep. probably. Yep. So we're going to now look at him not next year, but we well actually we looked at Jordan Poole as a twenty five million dollar player when he was still in that last year of the deal. I remember you and Dibs would always be like, well, he's not a twenty five million dollar player right now. I he's still in last year. Yeah. That is but, my peak. I love him. You know the other, and this is where I think there's a comparison with Brock Purdy. You, you, you're going to have to imagine him on a team on a different team. You're going to pay him, and he's going to be on a little different team when that contract is at full strength. You know what I mean? Because you know, he's four years from now, he's going to be better than Steph Curry. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So now you got to start Man. envisioning him without Steph and without the guy. And I'm not saying, well, you can't find people, but what's he like without Steph Curry? What, what might he be like without Draymond defensively behind him? And we'll look at it. We'll start looking at him a little differently. But, no, it's, yeah, it's all got. Sorry. Go no, ahead. the things the things I heard Bob Myers saying about him last night was the things that why I think he's untouchable and a franchise guy. He's listening to Steve Kerr. He's soaking everything in. He's working hard at his game. He's more um, receptive to criticism and coaching than he was no before. Doubt. Like all of these things that if he's trending that way behind the scenes and he's listening to people and he wants to be great. And what we're seeing, we're seeing. We just see the finished product every night yeah. at seven fifteen or whatever it is. But if he's doing that behind the scenes and he wants to be great, you ain't going nowhere. No, dude. I You're agree. Yeah, right here. yeah. They they started listening to each other. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like he went to Shams and Steve listened, and then yeah. Steve talked, and then he listened, and now you're getting good stuff out of it. But Stani, you're also, I think, right, which is that this isn't. It's ju it's not just about Jonathan Kaminga. Like when w when the Warriors won. There was like a whole thing going on, right. right? There was a system. There were players. There was continuity. There was the understanding of one another. So yes, this will absolutely at some point be about what's around Jonathan, because even the crappy teams have a dude, right? The Pistons have know. Cade Cunningham. Oh my gosh. He's a dude. Yeah. So what? Yeah. You get what was that? They get you sixteen wins. I mean, I just think that if if you and I know it's a small sample size, but if you look at what happened last night. They got a guy, Aldama, who's making threes. He made five threes. And there he is squared up against Kaminga, and Kaminga gives him too much room. And he makes another three, and Kerr calls timeout and puts his hands on his head. I think a year or two ago, Kaminga either might have been taken out of the game Good point. or would have reacted terribly yes. to that. And what happened? He comes out of the timeout, and they he's the reason they were up 10 at half. Yep. He made... He made two great offensive plays and two great defensive plays. Five nothing run in ten seconds. Exactly. Yeah. And I also like yeah. then you want to go inside the inside. One of the defensive plays he made was in a passing lane, so he's guarding a guy on the wing. And the other good defensive play he made was when he's guarding the ball. So that tells me he's got an ability. He he's got the potential to do both things well. It just it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. You got to get consistent. You got to keep playing that hard for longer stretches. And then you could start talking about, well, how good can this guy be if now he's doing this and this? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's he's, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, I got to be careful. It, it no, Did you hear ahead. Myers on the broadcast? Because I love Jalen Brown, and he's getting paid handsomely. I really do. Uh, Myers said he, he, he used that as a comp for Kaminga, and I was just saying, Bob, to myself, like, if it all went right and he checked every box we just mentioned, Kaminga, uh. uh, physically, I think he would be more – of a problem than Jalen Brown, who's headed to the Hall of Fame, it looks like. I thought the same thing, by the but way. But Jalen Brown. I thought that was an odd comparison. I, but, I, but Bob I Myers feel like forgot more basketball. I'm not better. crazy about it, because I don't want him taking that many threes. Is, right. I think of but him Jaylen's more as a forward a great than a guard. Player, but, but I just feel like if all went right, this is a specimen. We're walking yeah, physically I mean, and what you talked about, the ability, man. But it, Bob Myers is great at what he does, yeah. by the way. I, I can listen to him. No, like him. I, dude, I love him, We man. were talking before the show. When he when he talks, I lean into the – he teaches man. me about basketball. Man. And it's something soothing about his voice. Like, 
I know he's very accomplished as a GM, but he can be as big as he wants to be as a broadcaster, yes. in my opinion. I love what he brings to the show. All right, Chance. Well, you have a great show. We'll a lot listening. to talk about. We didn't even talk about March Madness. And or Draymond grabbing the jersey. I, <laughs> I don't even know if my bracket's still alive. Oh, what happened? Dude, it's oh, like, when you, it's like you look forward to, to playing BYU golf lost. for a week, and you get out there, and you double bogey the first, yeah. and then you triple bogey the second, and that's my bracket okay, on 95.7. The game. The game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.